Where the heck have I been for three years? To everyone who has asked me if I'm coming back to my channel or encouraged me while I've been missing in action for the last few years, thank you. When I started my channel, my after class series was designed to answer the questions that as an educator, I received constantly after class was over. They were usually trend driven questions. Questions like, how do I color someone's hair gray? Or how do I know what level this formula is when I'm having to do these creative color formulations for the colors that are on trend right now. I was in front of salons all the time and doing classes a lot. So I was constantly hearing feedback from colorists what their biggest question of the day is. But I'm not in front of salons every day. I work in my salon, but I'm not an educator with a large manufacturer anymore. But this is what I do know. It seems like as I've been thinking of a way to refocus and restart my channel, God has sent so many people into my life who have cosmetology licenses, who have went through all of the effort and time and blood, sweat, and tears that it takes to get your license. And then they tell me that they never worked one day in the salon. I can't imagine going through all of that time and expense and energy and then for nothing to use it as entrance to the beauty supply club and get a discount on products. And in talking to all of these people, the one thing I heard over and over again, the main reason why they didn't use their license is out of fear. They didn't feel like they knew what they were doing. They didn't feel like they knew how to formulate color. They were afraid of upsetting someone because they didn't have confidence in themselves. And the number one fear that I kept hearing was hair color formulation. The truth is school prepares us to pass state board. It does not prepare us for the salon. So we go to school to get our license and then the rest of our experience for the rest of our career teaches us how to be successful and to work in real life salon situations. And it was kind of upsetting to me because the fear of hair color formulation was disproportionate to its importance. So don't get me wrong. You have to mix up the right thing and put it on the hair for the color to turn out. But successful hair color is about 5% formulation and 95% application. For every client who sits in my chair, I could come up with a hundred formulas that would work just fine, that would meet their expectations and have a beautiful result. Formulation is not the biggest thing. And for every proper formulation, if I apply it improperly, it's not going to have the proper result. I've really felt in my heart a calling to help others understand hair color formulation, to make it very simple. I'm going to speak about the color that I use in my salon as when I'm giving examples, but this is hair color theory that will apply to whatever color line you're using. So if you are a student in school or someone newly licensed, or maybe you've been a seasoned stylist working in a departmentalized salon cutting hair, and now you have moved out onto your own and decided that you're going to be a full service salon and offer color and cutting services, that can be very intimidating as well. So any of those situations would benefit from the information that I'm planning on sharing. If you're already formulating and it's working for you and you feel confident, then by all means, don't confuse your yourself and listen to what I have to say. One of the biggest mistakes I think hairdressers make are doubting that little voice inside that's telling us if what we're doing is going to be right or wrong. So don't let someone else confuse you if you're successful in the salon. Also, if you are a seasoned colorist and successful and maybe you're bringing in an apprentice or an assistant and you're responsible for their training, sometimes hearing it in a different way, hearing someone else present 
present it and organize it in a different way than what you've been saying can just help that other person flip that switch and understand color. So hopefully I'll be helpful to someone. So for anyone who's interested in my channel, that's the new focus, hair color formulation, keeping it simple so that you can start to build your color in the salon confidently, understanding the, the whys and what's, because when you really understand all of the chemistry and the hair and the whys and the hows, you'll understand which rules you can bend, which rules you can break, and which rules aren't rules. They're laws, and you really need to stick with them for your own best interest. So if that's what you want to know, you can stop now. For everyone who has asked me, where have you been? What happened to you, Julie? Why did you stop uploading videos? And why did you drop off the face of the planet? So I've had back problems my whole life, but they've never been just debilitating. It's just kind of ups and downs. About 11 years ago, when I was pregnant with my son, I really injured my back. And the little problem that I had became a chronic, sometimes debilitating problem. So I had been managing and controlling off and on. But about the same time that I started my channel, I also really had a, a horrible time with it. And I was debilitated by it. I had people suggesting that I go on disability. I wasn't even sure if I was going to keep the doors to my salon open because I didn't know if I was going to be able to walk after I stood up out of my car when I got to work. There were days I would just have to stop whatever I was doing and go home or days that I needed to go home but I couldn't even drive and I just had to lay on the floor of my salon to wait till I could actually sit in a car and drive myself home. So I had so many amazing clients that stuck with me through this and so many prayers for me and I am managing now and doing doing much better. But for a while there I was just struggling so bad and any Anyone who's experienced a, a chronic pain situation, it is not just a physical struggle. It it really does a number on your uh, mental health for sure. So in the midst of all of this, and I was trying to find help, I couldn't get a proper diagnosis, and I had to stop educating. I stopped. I stopped doing anything besides the absolute minimum. My main goal was just keep the salon open, keep some clients, keep some kind of income, and you can rebuild later. But I, I had to use all of my focus and energy on getting better. When I finally found my amazing doctor that I have now and got a proper diagnosis, I thought, this is what I've been waiting for. I'm going to take a year off of everything in life except for working in the salon behind the chair and focus on getting this fixed because that was the biggest problem I thought was not having a proper diagnosis. Well, then I found out I had doctors that I'm sure suspected what was really wrong with me. But the problem is that there's not a whole lot that you can do. And insurance hardly covers anything that's even available. So you have to pay out of pocket for any treatment. And there's some doctors that just say, mm, I don't even touch that part of your body. I'm like, go find someone else. So my year of trying to get better and find find my treatment or my, my cure really is what I was thinking, turned into realizing that there's some things we can't fix and some things we can't cure. And then I spent, I think, the next year mourning the loss of my old life that, that I thought was going to be over because of this problem. And I had worked for eight years full time as an educator, traveling around 50 to 75 percent of the time. And I was in front of a new salon and a new group of stylists every day doing in salon classes and events and shows. And I loved it. I I loved every minute of it. And when all of this happened, I left the full-time job, became an independent contractor, a part-time educator where I worked in the salon. And then I did mostly local in-salon classes within my area. And that's Houston. So, you know, that could be within a three-hour drive. But so when I realized that there wasn't going to be a cure and all of my treatment was going to come out of my pocket anyways, so I had to keep working to make the money, to keep paying the money, to buy myself more time so I could keep working. And it was just a horrible downward spiral of thinking. And I think I spent the next year just 
mourning the loss of what I thought that I was going to get back. Well, now between physical therapy and medication and the most important thing, a procedure that I have done every six months that like burns the nerves that transmit the pain signal to my brain, I'm managing and I'm managing just fine. I mean, I do have ups and ups and downs and highs and lows, but my salon is great. I'm great and I'm ready to come back to my channel and start to help stylists in some way and start uploading videos again. To be successful in the salon, I think that in this day and age of social media and insta fame it's very easy for us to get swept away in the desire you know the desire for celebrity status and for people to look up to you and there's so many people who are wonderful hairdressers and it's very easy for us to want to live like our idea of what a, a celebrity hair stylist is anyone who's been a hairstylist for any length Length of time understands that if you really want to be successful, you have to come to work with a servant's heart. It's it is art, but our medium is connected to a real life person, and our medium sometimes connects their self esteem so strongly to our art that it has a whole different meaning than many other artists. So more than showing off our skills and you know how great our picture is going to look on Instagram we know deep down that we have to care for that person who's in our chair and we have to care about them enough to give them something that's going to make them feel so good and that's where real success is because we can do beautiful work and if that person is not happy we feel like we failed that's what I hope to accomplish with my channel now I really hope that I can serve some stylists with a servant's heart to help make hair color formulation a little bit easier, keep it really simple, and maybe inspire you to look at things a little differently from maybe how you were taught in school and build you up in the courage to take that next step in building your hair color business and your income. So thanks so much for everyone who's watched this entire video. If you have a suggestion for a future video or topic you'd like to see, please put it in the comments and I will definitely be using comments as a place to pull ideas from in the future. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Be sure to stay tuned because my first series coming up is going to be on hair color chemistry, understanding the different types of color, how their chemistry works, and how that technical consultation is going to help you decide which color chemistry you should use. So thanks so much. I'll see you soon.